Module 4, Graphs, Functions, and Applications. We have an equation with two variables, an x and a y. And any time I put in a number for x, I get a resulting y answer. For example, I got y equals x plus 3. If I put in negative 3 for x, negative 3 plus 3, I get the resulting y is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. I put in two negative two for x. Negative two plus three is one. I go for I can go down farther. I can put in four for x. Four plus three is the resulting y is seven. So I input x and, I, and, I, and when I go through this equation, I output with a y result. I can graph this. The x-axis is on the horizontal, at the arrow pointing to the right. And the y-axis on the vertical. And you see every one of these numbers matches a point on the graph. So negative 3 and 0. I'll go to negative 3 in the x-axis. And you can see it's on the 0 for the y-axis. I go to 2 on the x-axis, and it matches to the 5 on the y-axis. So this equation can be visualized as a graph. Similarly with this y equals x squared. I put negative 3 in for x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is plus 9. Negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 0 squared is 0. And so on. And because everything comes positive, it shapes like a u. This is called a parabola. We'll study this in quadratics next week. Now, when we look at a point on a graph or points, we have them in parentheses. And the first one is always the x. The second one is always the y. And the x is called the domain. It dominates. It's the input. It'll determine what the y is for the range. So that's why it's called the domain. It dominates it. And the range is the y. So I've got three points here. One, three. That's x and y. One to three. My second point is two, comma, five. My third point is four, comma, nine. Again, the first number is on the, the x coordinate. The second number is the y coordinate. Well, my domains are my x's, my 1, 2, and 4, my domains. My ranges are 3, 5, 9. Now, when we look at linear functions, we can determine what the slope is and the y-intercept by looking at the equation. Y-intercept is where the line intercepts the y-axis. And where it is y-axis, x is 0. And I can simply put in 0 for x to get the y-intercept. So I get the equation f of x equals 2x plus 9. I put in 0 for x. 2 times 0 is 0. So I just leave with 9. So the y-intercept is 9. And you can see if I graph it, 2x plus 9, that's the equation. That's where it ends up being. The y-intercept, y equals negative 5x plus 4. It's going to be 4. You can see it right there. This is like you see the 9 above, above it. I put in 0 for x. Negative 5 times 0 is 0. It's plus 4. And when I graph negative 5x plus 4, you can see I, that y-intercept or intercept y-axis is at 0, 4. The slope is the rise or the, the, dis, the ratio of the distance of the vertical axis, the y-axis, to the horizontal axis, the x-axis. I got an equation here, y equals 3x plus 2. Y-intercept is 2. The slope is 3. I can look at that where it's touching the 3, where it's touching the x. That 3x, it's 3. But I can also graph it. I can say it's vertical over horizontal. If I start at one point here on that 0, 2, and then go where does it touch again at the 5, 1, well, it goes up 3, that's my vertical, it goes across 1, 3, 1, so that's the ratio. But we also find a slope if we just have two points by using this equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I looked at two points, for example, it's given to points 8, comma, 7, and 2, comma, minus 1. Point 1 is 8, 7, point 2 is 2 minus 1. My x1 is 8, my y1 is 7. And the second point, my x2 is 2, my y2 is negative 1. And I'm going to plug these numbers into my equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That equals negative 1 minus 7, y2 minus y1 is minus 1 minus 7 over 
x minus x1 is just 2 minus 8. And that is, ends up being negative 8 over negative 6, which simplifies to negative 4 over 3. And that is the slope if I connect those two points with a line.